cars expensively burn fossil fuels, needlessly consuming vast quantities of non-renewable resources while polluting the air we breathe. However, there are other engines that require no fossil fuels to operate. We will look into these new engines and hopefully find something abundant, something renewable, something right under our nose. Although inhabited by aboriginals for some 40,000 years, Australia was founded as an island colony in 1788. Australia was made the world's largest prison by the British government. Men, women, children, a whole criminal class exiled in bondage to an inhospitable land where they made a home among marsupials because there was no escaping from this island. Australia. A continent marked by beauty and danger. From the rainforests of northern Queensland to the blue heat of the great Victorian desert. From space, the Australian continent is a mass of yellow desert with only the coastal regions wet enough to farm. Through climate change and mismanagement of natural resources, the desert steadily encroaches on the shoreline. A fact made eerily apparent when in September of 2009, a massive dust storm descended on Sydney. With their resources limited and without any significant oil deposits, Australians welcome new technologies to harness new resources. In the universities and garages of Australia, the underbelly of combustion engines is being redesigned. Engines that range from the more commonly known electric car to the lesser known air car whose motor runs on compressed air. Peter Reeves raced cars for money in the Australian Speedway. I started racing Speedway back when I was 22, that's many, many years ago. And um, I was quite successful there, but then uh, I decided one day to grow up and act my age. Sold all the, um, all the racing gear. I happened to see the movie Who Killed the Electric Car. And that really generated a lot of interest in me and um, we found that was uh, the way to go. Peter took a course at a local technical institute on building your own electric car. Soon after, he decided he would be the first in his city to actually build it. I believe I can cruise on 100 kilometres an hour and I'd hope with the batteries that I've used that I'll, that I will be able to uh, achieve a 200 kilometer range between rechargers. Peter bought the rechargeable batteries directly from China for $11,000, the biggest expense to build the car. The question that really matters, how long does it take to recharge the batteries? Uh, it takes about seven hours. They are half charged after two hours. $11,000 for the batteries, two to seven hours to fully recharge. Have many people converted their cars? When I first started this project, there was heaps of enthusiasm in the community to get this up and going. But then the price of fuel came down and the enthusiasm came down accordingly. So as far as I know, um, there are quite a few people now who are sitting back and just sort of saying, we'll wait and see how Peter goes with his before we get started on ours. And it's been, um, it's been a little bit disappointing because I was sort of hoping to uh, develop mining in conjunction with other people doing similar developments. The electric car would be a big step away from fossil fuels, but this is a very expensive conversion. What about people who can't afford such an upgrade? For example, people in China or India or Easter Island, will they spend 3000 on a car? Probably not, so what other options do we have? Introducing the air-powered car with an automatic motor designed by Engineer, used by Deakin University in their award-winning Ford Motor Competition design, the Model T Square. There's diesels and there's some new, really smart diesels, but that's expense again and complication. Uh, and in, in a big city with a lot of people or in a, perhaps a, a simpler, um, civilization that complication can't be dealt with as well whereas a simple pneumatic motor um, is easy it's safe to store air you can compress air numerous different ways 
uh, from different energy sources as well. Uh, and it's a feasible option that was rather cheap. With pollution a major problem in metropolises within China and India, Engineer's car, which runs on compressed air, just might be the answer to the third world's desire for a higher standard of living. Well, as you can see, this engine is extremely light. I can hold them with one finger. This engine has the capability to drive a 600 kilogram vehicle. Just the one of them. Angelo Di Pietro is the owner of a startup company in Melbourne, Australia called Engineer. Engineer's research and development led to a pneumatic engine that has attracted the attention of technical universities and the Ford Motor Company. The Pietro motor from Engineer uses a simple cylindrical rotary piston that rolls with minimal friction inside the cylindrical stator. The motor speed and torque are simply controlled by throttling the amount or pressure of air into the motor. The Di Pietro motor gives instant torque at zero RPM and can be precisely controlled to give soft start and acceleration control. Its small size and lightweight aids in the integration of the car. Its emissions are cold air. Now this engine will permit us to manufacture new type of vehicles, vehicles that they are affordable, sustainable, and environmentally friendly. Affordable because we now can eliminate hundreds of components from the engine to the wheel. We take out everything in there and we connect our engine straight onto the wheel. Therefore, we will use less energy, but also the engine itself, it's very light, very compact and has very high torque, especially a start, which when it's most needed. So the fuel to run this engine, it's only compressed air. We got plenty of that. Have you had any assistance from the Australian government? I have had a little support from the Australian government, but they're small things. They will, at some stage, you know, come to me and say, Andrew, we really want to help you now but I leave it to them. Some people ask me, when actually you think this is gonna happen? Well, I think they ask me the wrong person. I only can do my best with the technology. The rest of the work has to be done by the people that understand and they got the money. Because remember, they're the people that are gonna change things. So, you know, there is plenty of scientists, plenty of engineers, plenty of everything there. We have to get the best. And with the best of these people, we make the best product. So where I am now, it's nothing. It's going to get better. Because at the moment, you know, I'm doing everything. But I'm not an expert in anything. But when you get the expert to work on each individual thing, this is going to be better than it is now. Inventor has developed an engine powered by nothing more Although than Angelo air. is still working without the backing of a major investor, he has had national media attention, appearing on the nightly news in 2005, as well as a not-so-conventional talent show called The New Inventors, a show in which he beat out the competition of an air sign for advertising along harbors and a convertible pair of high heels for women who walk to work. There are other types of air engines. For example, the piston engine in Tata Motors CityCat being developed in India. What's different about your engine and what are the benefits? I have scientific reports where the scientific report says that our motor is capable to use up to 10 times less say than a piston motor. And remember one thing, when we did the testing with Monash University, going back in 2002, when we compared with other motor, our motor was seven times more then they add one, seven times smaller. And yet we produce more power and we were more efficient. 